Hey Polish fans, it's Caroline again and welcome to another video here at Wild Wind Lacquer. In today's video we are doing part six of the comparisons that I've been doing of that huge haul of estate polish. We are still doing colors by LaRoe but at this point we are winding down. After this selection which is our blues there's only about 40 more polishes in that grouping this particular brand and those are going to be the white polishes, black polishes, neutrals, and any other random colors that didn't really go with anything else like I've got a few I think straight up UP colors that weren't really reds I guess I could have done them in the oranges but I didn't so we're going to look over the rest of those in our last section but for part six we are going over our blues this one I actually found a little bit difficult to color organize because we have a lot of different shades in the blue family. I have four whole rows as I have been doing. I tried to group them by color so I have the lighter ones up at the top starting with any of the really sheer ones going into our silvery grays into our brighter shades but here it starts getting a little wibbly wobbly because I think I could have rearranged the second row a tiny tiny bit but I think they're still in the right groupings that we should still be able to do some comparisons. But yeah, this one I, I found a little bit hard for whatever reason. In any case, we have 60 bottles that we're gonna be taking a look at today. We better get going. Uh, if this is going to go at all similarly to the greens, this might take me a while because I was shocked at how long it took me to do the greens, considering purple is my favorite and green is not necessarily my favorite. In any case, let's see how the blues go. Um, predictions, let's see, for blues, I don't think I would be able to get rid of half, but I would be happy with a third. We'll see how we do. Let's go ahead and get started up here at the top. This first one doesn't really have anything to compare it to because this is a flaky topper called a river. And this is it in just one coat. I did a little half swatch over black and on its own. And this is it in just that one coat with a glossy top coat. And yeah, this was really pretty. As a person that likes flakies, this one really caught my attention. I love all of the different colors that you're seeing. Now, my, the shifts in this one do stick primarily to the blues and greens, but I want to say there's sort of a blurple at the edge of this that is absolutely gorgeous. And of course, it is a topper, so you could wear this over whatever you like. And I don't know for sure that I do already have a flaky topper in this color, so I do want to hold on to River. Next up is another one that doesn't really have anything to compare it to, mainly because of the formulation. This is almost a gray. This is Love You to the Moon in three coats. And like I said, this one almost falls into the gray category, but because it has a prominent blue flash, which of course on my screen is not showing up at all, I thought I'd compare it to the blues because on the nail, there is a prominent blue component. This one also has a scattering of hollow and it is in a pretty creamy base. Now on screen, I do feel like it's coming off, at least on my camera, a little green. So there might be something in that shift. Yeah, that little green glow that you're seeing that might skew how this looks. The base, like I said, is sort of this gray and then the coloration is coming from the glow inside of it. Then of course you have the beautiful scattering of the hollow in here. This one is really pretty. I think this for me would be more of a winter polish. And honestly, I'm not really ready to go into winter. I am still really liking my deeper jewel tones. So I don't know if that's what is skewing this polish for me, but I'm just not really feeling this one. Yeah, for whatever reason, I'm just not feeling it. I feel like for winter, I do already have a few polishes that I would be a little bit more excited over this one. So I think I am going to let Love You to the Moon go. That's gonna be our first D stash. Okay, so I moved one of those down a little bit more towards the other glitter bombs that we have. So the next two that we're gonna compare are these. We have Helen and Wind Beneath My Wings. These are a little bit green leaning, but still what I would consider a blue. Both do have a larger particle shimmer, although in Helen, it's more of a straight up pink, whereas in Wind Beneath My Wings, you're getting almost a UP shift, sort of that red to green to gold. In fact, it might even be a particle that has that UP shift in it, plus hollow. That one is really pretty. That is more blue of the two. I feel like Helen does lean a little bit more of that kind of robin's egg blue green. Let's see them on the nail. On top we have Wind Beneath My Wings. On the bottom we have Helen. 
and Helen is in two coats. Wind Beneath My Wings is in three. And there you can definitely see the color differences. Helen has that more green lean, whereas Wind Beneath My Wings is the bluer of the two. Wind Beneath My Wings, I still say, has some kind of a UP shift in it that definitely has a red glow to it. And then by comparison, Helen has more of a pink. I definitely like Wind Beneath My Wings. I am a sucker for a UP shift, even if it's not OG UP. I love the kind of twinkle that this has and the beautiful shifts. Plus you have a lovely hollow that does show up, even though this one is a pretty opaque polish in three coats. That formulation seems very well balanced. So Wind Beneath My Wings is going to be a keeper. Does that mean that I'm getting rid of Helen? I feel like Helen just doesn't really have a lot of that shimmer that, sh that really glows, but I don't know that the top coat did it any favors either. So I'm gonna really quickly re-top coat this again. Top coats have been the bane of my existence for this portion of the video because these already were top coated twice. But as I've mentioned in other portions of the comparisons, the first product that I used for the top coat really didn't seem to do anything. I don't know if it's not a top coat. It didn't really say. I just said nail, nail protector. And it's something that I haven't seen before, but this was something that I got a lot of in the haul. I got like seven bottles of that. And I figured it was a top coat because it was clear, but it doesn't appear to have been. So I had to re-top coat everything. And... On some polishes, like for this one, it doesn't really seem to have glossed it up. And I don't know if that's the fault of it being on a swatch stick or if it's the fault of the polish, the fault of the top coat, just the combination of any of those components, I really don't know. But here it is nice and glossy with a fresh top coat. It is very pretty, but I am hesitating long enough for me to realize that I probably am not as in love with this as I could be. So Helen is going to get the boot. All right, on to the next two. These are sort of gray blues. We have Stormy Skies and Plum Perfect. I'm very confused actually on why that is Plum Perfect. Uh, it is not plum. It is not purple. <laughs> it is a gray blue. So either my bottle completely faded or this was mislabeled or something happened, or it was named ironically. I don't really know. Both of these do have hollow, although I would say Plum Perfect, at least in the bottle, has a much more prominent hollow flare. And then Stormy Skies does have some micro glitters maybe a hollow. There's possibly an iridescent one in there as well. There's a lot of different twinkles going on. Um, whereas Plum Perfect does have a little bit of like a shimmer component. And actually maybe Stormy Skies does have a light wash of gold as well. So slightly different particles, but both with a little bit of a gold glow or shimmer. So here they are in the nail. Plum Perfect on top in three coats, Stormy Skies on the bottom in two. And here you can definitely tell the difference of formula. Look at that hollow in Plum Perfect. Very dazzling. You have a strong linear flare, whereas Stormy Skies is a creamier, more stormy gray. Perfectly named. That one I don't think was meant to be a linear hollow. I think the hollow is more there to add some sparkle, whereas Plum Perfect is a very beautiful holographic polish. Look at that color. Stormy Skies is another one where I feel like the top coat really didn't do it any favors. It's not super, super glossy still. So again, not sure where the fault lies with that, but it is a really nice shade of a like slate blue gray. Um, and I like it. I really like how that one ended up looking, but I have a hard time saying no to Plum Perfect because that is a beautiful hollow. Absolutely love that hollow. So Plum Perfect, even though it's weirdly named, I think is going to be a keeper because that hollow is just hard to say no to. Stormy Skies is really, really pretty, but I have a lot of grays and I do feel like this is... I don't know, comparable, I guess, to a number of the grays that I might already have because it is not really a hollow and it has more of that shimmer component. I don't know that this really stands out among the other grays that I have. Maybe we'll give this one another top coat to see if a re-glossification of this changes my mind. Yeah, not really. Okay, well that clinches it. It is pretty, but it's just not hollering at me. <laughs> so I think we're gonna go with it. Stormy Skies is gonna be our second one to go into the D-stash from this blue comparisons of Colors by Leroux. 
Now we're getting into our glitter bombs. We actually have three to look at. We have Tasmo Kramer, Twinkling Lights, and Monkey See, Monkey Do. I think the, t the last two are going to be more comparable, but I did want to compare it to Tasmo Kramer because it is in a similar vein and they're all glitter bombs. Whereas if I had this one over where I had it previously, I just didn't really have anything to compare it to. Formulation wise, again, Tasmo Kramer is going to be the sort of the oddball out. It is slightly greener by comparison, but still something that I would consider a blue. There are some glitters in there that are not present in the other two. You can see some of those larger glitters there. The other two have a more similar component recipe. Both have a larger particle like Micro Glitter Hollow. And then Monkey See Monkey Do has, I think, a shimmer component, that little bit of a gold wash in there. So from left to right, we have Tasmo Kramer in three coats. In the middle is Twinkling Lights in three coats. And on the far right, we have Monkey See Monkey Do in two coats. So that's actually a surprising difference between these two. I would have thought, given the bottle and how similar they seemed, that they would be equal in the amount of coats needed. But as you can see, even with three coats on that one in the middle, that was twinkling lights, it is still a little bit sheerer than Monkey See Monkey Do, which only needed two coats. So there's a formula difference there as well. Color-wise though, they are pretty similar, although on camera you can definitely see the subtle differences. By comparison, Monkey See Monkey Do is a little bit greener. Twinkling Lights is more of that blue-gray, and then Tasmo Kramer has a little bit of that aqua lean with those glitters that the other two don't have. Now, the hollow on these two here, Monkey See, Monkey Do, and Twinkling Lights are gorgeous. That hollow glitter is so sparkly and rainbowy and beautiful, so I definitely want one of those. I don't know that I need both necessarily. <laughs> They are similar enough that I don't think if I were to get rid of one, I would be cutting myself short or getting rid of something that was super unique to my collection. Tasmo Kramer, though, I am sort of second guessing if I want that or not. Obviously, it was in my keep pile. All of these were in my keep pile. So when I unboxed it, I did like it. But I am sort of wondering about if I would wear that one. So here it is again in the bottle. You have hollow in a couple of different kinds. You have the larger green and aqua glitters. You have maybe even a larger silver... I don't know if that's hollow or just metallic glitter, but for whatever reason, this one isn't really speaking to me. I mean, it would be a nice winter polish because it is so rainbowy and shimmery and pretty, but I have a lot of silver hollows to do comparisons of. This one I did decide to do with the blues because it does have those blue components that make this lean more blue. I mean, just to compare it to one of the silver hollows. This one is Chillin' in Paradise. I don't know if that's gonna be obvious on camera, but to me, because it had those green and blue glitters is why I decided to do it in this comparison here. But yeah, I don't know, for whatever reason, I'm just not really feeling Tasmo Kramer, so we're gonna go with it. Tasmo Kramer is going to be de-stashed. And then of these two, Monkey See, Monkey Do, and Twinkling Lights, which do I like better? Both of them are sparkly little glitter bombs. They're gorgeous. This one is tough. So in the bottle for Monkey See Monkey Do, I don't know if you can see those blurple twinkles in there. I can't tell if that's the hollow that was used or if there's an additional blurpily glitter or something in here because it won't really capture on camera. I don't know if you can see it at all. I'm not seeing it on my screen, but I am seeing it in person. And I can't tell if I'm getting that in Twinkling Lights. So in the bottle, I would say I'm leaning more towards Monkey See Monkey Do. But oddly enough, on the nail on this swatch, I'm liking Twinkling Lights. Okay, I think we're going to do the re-top coat of these two as well, because again, especially for these, these I'm not as surprised 
that they aren't glossy because these are glitter bombs. And I think when I would wear, if I were to wear either of these, I would definitely, definitely wear them with a glitter smoother because they are so jam packed full of glitter. I think they need that additional layer to smooth things out and make it nice and glossy. So there they are with a top coat. Twinkling lights, monkey see, monkey do. Goodness. I mean, they aren't different enough that I think I can justify keeping both. I re really don't know that I could justify keeping both of these. <laughs> Well, this one is way harder than I thought it would be, but I'm, I am seeing differences. Hopefully on camera, you can also see some of the differences, but like I said, I think they're too similar for me to justify both of them in my collection, but they're both hollow sparklies that have me dazzled. And that really is making things difficult. I can definitely see in Monkey See Monkey Do, there is that blue component in there with the hollow that again, I don't know if that's gonna come through on camera, but I can see it in person in certain lights that by comparison is making twinkling lights seem a little bit duller in the base color. Oof, yeah, this one is just so hard because just when I think I've made my choice, the other one is like, wait a second, I'm sparkly too. <laughs> Yeah, Twinkling Lights is twinkly. It is, it lives up to expectation. Its name is, uh, fits perfectly. It's twinkly, it's gorgeous, it's all of the things. But Monkey See Monkey Do has that blue that I really, really like. It's one of those sort of ghostly components that you're not always gonna see. In fact, like I've been saying, you probably can't see it at all on camera, but I can definitely see it in person. My first roadblock in the blues. Well, you know what? I can't sit here for 20 minutes trying to decide on one. So we're going to go ahead and just put both of these in the keep pile. Like I said, I will not, I cannot justify keeping both of them. I don't think at this point. To me, they are too similar to have both, but I cannot make the choice at this moment. My head just won't let me. So I will be coming back and doing a, another round of comparisons after I've done all the individual brands. So first round of comparisons is brand to brand in each color grouping. And then at the end of that, I will be comparing all of the colors and mixing the brands and making sure that I haven't duped myself that way. So this is a multi-stage process. Those will be compared again at some other point. I mean, I'm already 30 minutes into filming. Is that possible? And I've only done seven polishes. Oh dear God, I really need to speed up. No, nine polishes, but still that's not that much better. Okay, moving along. Next up, we have two polishes. This is a hazy shade of winter and turn of the tide. These are again, not going to be dupes of each other, but they are similar. These are both sort of a blue green. Both of these do have a hollow component. They also have a shimmer, but the shimmer is where there are some differences as well as the exact tone or shade that these are. A hazy shade of winter is a little bit darker. Turn of the tide is a little bit lighter. And as far as the shimmer goes, there is more of a gold in turn of the tide and then a larger pink, almost like micro flaky. And then there is kind of a light wash of a mix of silver and pink in a hazy shade of winter. So here they are on the swatch. Both of these are in three coats with a glossy top coat. And both of these do have a nice hollow on the nail. Maybe not the most hollow flare. I think of the two, a hazy shade probably has the most linear flare. Then turn of the tide is a little bit lighter. Hopefully on your screen, you can see that it's a little bit more of a, an aqua green blue. There's more of a deeper shade of aqua in a hazy shade. Are they comparable enough to each other that I could get rid of one of these? I really like both of them, but oddly enough in this exact shade range, even though a hazy shade of winter has that beautiful linear flare, I'm just not feeling it. I'm leaning more towards turn of the tide. I like that sort of a almost mint lean in that aqua. So I think we're gonna go with it because I'm actually making a decision. <laughs> so we're gonna go with it. Turn of the tide is going to be put in the keepsies pile and a hazy shade of winter is going to be de -stashed. Yeah, I mean, it's beautiful, but for whatever reason, we're gonna go with it. All right, next up we have three that we are going to compare. We've got mom jeans blue skies and sunny days and a faded version of house of blues so 
These are the closest in this color family. These are kind of gray leaning, kind of green leaning blues, but they do have some different components. I think of the three, the House of Blues is the most hollow. I think that's very visible on camera. Although Mom Jeans does have some hollow as does Blue Skies and Sunny Days, just not as flary. There is a secondary component. You can see that gold wash in House of Blues. There are other components in the other two as well. Some shimmer and some flakies in Mom Jeans. And then some smaller flakies in Blue Skies and Sunny Days, as well as a pink shimmer. So here they are side by side. From left to right, we have Mom Jeans in two coats. In the middle is Blue Skies and Sunny Days in two coats as well. And then on the right, we have the faded House of Blues in three coats. So two, two, and three. We are are still maintaining that amazing hollow in that faded one house of blues and then the other two have a more subtle hollow look on the nail as far as the shade goes too I think these last two are pretty similar I think the color difference might come down mainly to just how flary that hollow is so the coloration of blue skies does end up being a little bit easier to see because you aren't being blinded by the hollow and then Mom Jeans, by comparison, is the lightest of the three. More of a ever so slightly denim-y leaning color. And then there are some flakies, but they're not a contrasting flaky, so they are not as easy to see. But you can see one right there, a couple of them. Let's just do a quick comparison of a hazy shade of winter and House of Blues. Now, keep in mind that one does say that it was faded. There was a little note on it. So I think by comparison, House of Blues is even more hollow and it is a deeper, more saturated blue-green. Blue Skies and Sunny Days is really pretty. I like the sort of diffused look that it has on the nail. Mom Jeans would be a really pretty winter color, but for whatever reason, it's just not really speaking to me by comparison. So we're gonna go with it. Mom Jeans is getting the boot. Yeah, see, it's got those little iridescent, I think they're iridescent flakies, like a light gold almost. But yeah, Mom Jeans is getting the boot. And then of these two, Blue Skies and Sunny Days versus House of Blues. Mm -hmm. Blue Skies and Sunny Days, again, does have more components in it, but I'm not sure if it makes like a massive impact on the nail. Because again, they're not really contrasting. They're sort of in the same color family. And I think because of that, I feel okay letting this one go as well. So Blue Skies and Sunny Days, we're deep stashing. We are on a roll, you guys. I think that's the best I've done on the top row in a while. And then for House of Blues, I do think I want to keep this one. The hollow on this is spectacular. And I like the saturated color. I think that might be why it's getting a heads up over a hazy shade of winter, is it's more saturated. So House of Blues, even though it is faded, is going to be a keeper. Moving on to our second row, we have these two to compare. We have Sunset at the Beach and The Bluest Eyes in Texas. These are pretty similar, pretty similar, at least in the bottle. Now, again, there are some subtle differences. We'll see that a little bit more on the nail. Sunset at the Beach, I think, is ever so slightly bluer. By comparison, Bluest Eyes is tex in Texas is a little bit more of a bright aqua but they both have very similar components which i think you can see they're shifting nicely in both bottles you've got a smaller particled shimmer as well as a little bit of a micro flaky adding some beautiful pink twinkles very similar shifts in all of those and here they are side by side sunset and then bluest eyes both of these are in three coats here you can definitely tell the difference in the tone sunset at the beach is slightly bluer bluest eyes in texas is a little bit more of that aqua lean but both again, on the nail, have very similar components. So it is mainly coming down to the base color. Which do I like better? And I think for this one, even though I really like, there's like a micro hollow glitter in Sunset at the Beach, which I don't think I see in the bluest eyes in Texas, at least not as predominantly on the nail. But even with that, I do think I'm leaning more towards the bluest eyes in Texas. I like that it is a little bit less dusty. There's almost this dusty quality to Sunset at the Beach. There's more saturation by comparison in the bluest eyes in Texas. I think that's what we're going to go with. Yeah, so we're keeping the bluest eyes in Texas and de-stashing Sunset at the Beach. All right, next up, we've got three that we're going to compare. Maybe 
four. I mean, that one is a totally different shade. We might have to do that one separately. And yeah, we might come back and compare this last blue hollow to whatever one I keep, if I can narrow that down, but it's darker than all of these. But here we have Summer Skies, Be Bold in Blue, and Oops. So all three of these do have a hollow component. I think of the three, the Oops might be the most linear. Then there is a couple of different components in a few of these, maybe even all of them. There is like a micro flaky there. You, I think you can see those little pink and purple flecks popping up. There's a golden shimmer in Be Bold in Blue. And then there's also a golden shimmer in the Oops. So it's very possible that the Oops is an Oops of Be Bold in Blue. Very possible. So from left to right, we have Summer Skies in three coats. The middle is Be Bold in Blue in two coats. And then on the far right, we have the Oops in three coats. And that definitely maintains the most linear flare of the three. I don't know if that's going to be easy to see in that from that angle, but see how flary that is by comparison. The other two have a more subdued look, even though the Summer Skies is also a three-coater. You can definitely see the little speckles of those micro flakies, the pinks and the purples, although maybe not as prominently on camera. Tone-wise, these are all pretty similar, although again, there are some subtle differences. I think the deepest shade is that, oops, it's a bit more almost like a teal deep aqua. The middle one, Be Bold in Blue, is a bit bluer, not quite as much green, although in person I would say it's a little bit closer than I feel like it's coming off on camera. And then Sunset Skies is dustier by comparison, although on camera it is coming off equally bright. So just something to keep in mind, in person it is a pinch dustier. But again, you can definitely see the pink and purple flux in there. On camera, I think you can see those nicely. So I definitely don't need all three. I can say that resolutely. The hollow of that turquoise oops though is very impressive. If I kept the oops, do I need summer skies? Yeah, I mean, those are actually different enough. The Be Bold in Blue, I do think is maybe not having any favors done to it by the top coat either. So we're gonna do a quick little top coat. Of and there it is with a fresh glossy top coat. Very pretty finish on that one. But I think of the three, I'm just not feeling that compared to these other two. It's not as flary, linear flary as that turquoise. Oops. And of the two, I like the additional components that are in Summer Skies. So I think the bold and blue we are gonna de-stash. And then I do wanna keep the oops. I really like the flare of that linear hollow in it. Does that mean that I need Summer Skies? I mean, there's not really any shifts. It's just those little flakes, those micro flakies. I mean, I could, but I'm not like head over heels in love with it. So we're gonna go with it because that rarely has been happening. So Summer Skies is gonna get the boot as well. We're gonna strike while the iron's hot. So next up, the one that I was sort of hemming and hawing if I was gonna do a comparison with those other blue hollows is this one called That Blue My Mind. This is in two coats. This one though was a few shades darker than any of those. Plus this one does have these, I don't know if those are glitters or micro flakies and like a silver. They do show up on the nail, but again, whew, top coat, top coat, top coat. My goodness, this is another one that I feel like you would need to wear it with a glitter smoother and then a top coat, even though there's not like a ton of glitter in here. There's enough that some part of this really maintains texture, even though I did top coat it. So here it is fresh and glossy. Now you can see those little twinkles of whatever those are. I still don't know if it's glitter or flakies, although given how textured it was, I'm leaning towards glitters. But yeah, that's a nice color. So let's compare it to the one that I did keep, the Oops Hollow. And as you can see, it is a deeper tone of blue and obviously not a hollow. So not really comparable, even though it does have a hollow component in the bottle anyways. Once you have it swatched, I think it's mainly because it is a two coater. You don't really see that hollow flame on it, but it is a nice shade of blue. However, primary shades, not that this is an exact primary, but primary shades in general often don't 
do it for me. I usually really prefer complex shades, which usually means at least a tertiary color, which is mixing two primaries. So even with this one, even though this is not your standard primary blue, it is a more basic color, if that makes any sense. So even though it does have hollow and it does have glitter, this one just isn't doing it for me. And we're going to go with it. Like I said, that isn't happening all that often with very many of these color comparisons. So when we can, we're going to make some cuts. And even though I love how it looks in the bottle, I don't know if that's going to be noticeable on camera. There is this beautiful silver flash in the bottle plus the hollow. But that part, it deepens up a lot once it's swatched. So we're going to go with it. That blew my mind. Is gonna get the boot. Next up we have these two, one of which might have UP in it. So we have butt dial and ba 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 there are five of those. All right, so butt dial, I'm pretty sure, might have UP in it. And then ba 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 has a bit more of a blue-green base. By comparison, butt dial is almost like a very jelly-like cobalt. But once they're swatched, they were comparable enough that I thought we would see how they looked side by side. This one, the ba 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 ba, is also a bit more dusty by comparison, like a dusty aqua green. So let's see how they look side by side. So both of these are in three coats. Butt dial's on the left, ba 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 is on the right. Is that an overboard reference? That might be an overboard reference. Um, so here they are side by side. Yeah, I'm pretty sure but dial has some form of UP in it. It has that sparkle that I love. It has that shift, which isn't going to come up on camera. My camera and lighting in this room does not like the green, but there is definitely a green shift in this. So not surprising, but dial is being kept. And then blah, 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 blah has sort of it, that, like I said, dusty muted quality to it. It does have a shimmer to it, but it's not super in your face. So I think I'm okay letting this one go. Yeah, we're gonna go with it again. When the iron is hot, I strike. <laughs> Cause can't keep them all. Okay, the next two are kind of similar to blah, 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 blah in components, but they're a deeper, dustier tone. We have Snowflake A Hattery and then Sub Zero. Both of these, like I said, are similar in tone. They're that dusty, teal-leaning, aqua, greeny blue. Both of them do have a pink component, but by comparison, the one in Snowflake is larger, and I think there's also micro glitter in Snowflake. By comparison, Sub-Zero has more of a smooth formula. That shimmer doesn't really have anything interfering with it. No flake use, no glitter. So here they are side by side. Snowflake in two coats over here on the left. On the right is Sub-Zero in three. Similar in base color, like I said, they're almost identical in the base color, but because we have a smoother formula in Sub-Zero with that shimmer, I think you can see the base color a little bit more prominently along the edges of the nail. Whereas in Snowflake A Hattery, <laughs> we have that larger particle that sort of plays with the color and makes it a little bit harder to see. But both are gorgeous. I mean, obviously, I love a larger shimmer particle. So Snowflake definitely is catching my attention. But I'm loving the moody nature of Sub-Zero. I really thought I'd be able to get rid of one of these. Really, really did. Am I going to? Oh, also, Snowflake is like signed. I, I still don't quite know if this is like signed by the owner or what the case is. There are a few of them that were like that. Just makes it a little bit extra special. But yeah, I, I like that one. I really like Snowflake. That one is just gorgeous. It's one of those complex shades. It's a complex formula. Snowflake is a keeper. Does that mean that Sub-Zero is not a keeper? Yes, I think so. I like it. I really like it. But what I have been noticing is I do have a tendency of buying shimmer polishes like this, and I often end up not liking how they look on me. Now this is a deeper shade of that kind of a polish though, so I might like this one on, but we're gonna go with it. Sub Zero's getting the boot. I can't keep them all. I have to keep reminding myself. Can't keep them all. Okay, the next two, actually maybe the next three we're gonna do comparisons of. We have Did You Know You're My Hero? Seen Anything Good Today in the Middle? 
and then Little Boy Blue on the right. So again, these are similar in tone, different components. I think the two on the edge have a larger shimmer particle. Both are beautifully bright pinks. And then the one in the middle is almost more red by comparison and a smoother particle. That one though does have a teeny tiny, almost UP shimmer on top of the more smooth one. So there's an additional component there that is in red. And then on top of that, there's a teeny tiny, like, I don't even know if it's a micro glitter or just a hollow component. There is something hollow in there. So there's twinkles and sparkles and beautiful components in that one. The other two are more obvious in the larger size, but let's go ahead and see how they look on the nail. So on the left is Did You Know You're My Hero in two coats. In the middle is Seen Anything Good Today in three. And then on the right is Little Boy Blue in two. So Little Boy Blue is by far the bluest of these three, but because it has a similar component, I thought I would compare it to the other two, but it is definitely the bluest. The other two have more of that green aqua lean to them. I was really hoping that this comparison would be one of the easier ones because they are similar in shade and component, but Darn it, if this isn't sort of giving me a pain. <laughs> I do really like Did You Know You're My Hero. I like all the different components in that. That's the one that has a larger component and a beautiful pink flash. By comparison, Seen Anything Good Today is smoother, but it does have some beautiful shifts. In fact, it does. Yeah, both of these do have shifts. See the on the edge, you've got that pink to gold. And then in person, I am seeing green in both of them. That isn't helping me make a decision though. And then Little Boy Blue, like I said, is the bluest. I think though, I'm okay letting Little Boy Blue go. When I was comparing this to the other two, I was almost thinking of keeping it because it is the darkest of the three. However, when I compare it to other shades, this one does lean a little bit more like basic sky blue. So I think I'm okay letting this one go. We're gonna go with it. We are gonna go with it. So Little Boy Blue is getting the axe. Okay, so now we're back to the two that are most similar. I don't think I need both. I mean, do I? Do I? <sighs> I am a sucker for shimmers. I really am. But these I don't think are different enough that I can justify keeping both. I know I said that before and ended up keeping them both anyways. However, <laughs> With this, this is a kind of polish that I know I already have a lot of. I know I already have a ton of other light to mid-tone blue, sh like jelly sheer polishes with shimmer. I know I do. So I'm not going to let myself keep both. I will not do it. <laughs> so if I'm going with that, if I'm going with, I cannot, cannot let myself keep both. I'm actually leaning more towards seeing anything good today. Something about the base I am liking more. Now, on screen, did you know you're my hero? I think is coming off as more of an like bright turquoise. It's dustier. It's dustier than that in person. And I think it's that dusty quality that's making me not lean towards that one. So I think we're gonna go with it again. Strike while the iron's hot. Did you know you are my hero? Even though it has those beautiful larger flakes in it, we're gonna go ahead and just go with it. We're de-stashing that one and keeping Seen Anything Good Today. Yeah, that one is really pretty. I only kept one of three, finally. <laughs> All right, moving on. We're gonna do, we're gonna do the next or if I can hold all of these in my hand at the same time. Not all of these are gonna compare to each other necessarily, but they are all in a very similar range, maybe save for the one on the end. We have I'll Be Seeing You, see spelled like the ocean, Waters of Belize, You Make My Day, Addie Mae, and High Tide. So these three in the bottle look more similar to each other, however, once they're swatched, at least from my angle looking at the swatch sticks, I would almost say that these three are more similar and this one is the brightest. But we're, we're gonna look at the swatch sticks in a second here, but here's how they look in the bottle. So we have a larger component and seemingly a more sheer formula in I'll Be Seeing You. There is more of a straight up shimmer in Waters of Belize and almost like a green aqua base to that color than in 
you make my day, Addie Mae, there are some larger components, that beautiful pink flush, as well as some flakies. And then there's a nice bright base to high tide and then a blue shimmer component. From left to right, I'll be seeing you in three coats. Then we have Waters of Belize, also in three coats. You Make My Day, Addie Mae, in two coats, and then High Tide in three. So I think we might move these around and compare larger shimmer to larger shimmer, and then smaller shimmer to smaller shimmer. So now that we have these rearranged, I can hold two at a time. <laughs> So we're going to compare I'll Be Seeing You to You Make My Day, Addie Mae. Those both have a larger particle pink flash. We have two coats versus three coats. And as usual, see the difference between the two and three. With the three coater, you get more shimmer because you can see it better in the formula. So you do have a bit of a brighter tone in You Make My Day, Addie Mae. But you have more sparkle in that pink in I'll Be Seeing You which is kind of what I'm leaning towards keeping. Let's do a little comparison of them in the bottle. I'll be seeing you on the left. You make my day, Addie Mae's on the right. Now, Addie Mae also has the additional flakies in it, which I really wasn't seeing too many of on the swatch, but you can definitely see them scattered there in the bottle. Both of them do have amazing shifts. You have green and gold there. And then the Addie Mae one also has a unicorn sticker, which I'm going to try not to let sway me in any way because it's just a sticker. <laughs> so yeah, there is more opacity to you make my day Addie Mae. I think we're going to go with it though. I think I'm keeping I'll be seeing you and getting rid of you make my day Addie Mae. Just of the two, I like how much better I can see the shimmer in I'll be seeing you. So we're going to go with it. Okay, on to the next Two, we have Waters of Belize versus High Tide. Both of these are in three coats. Waters of Belize has that greener, dustier base. By comparison, you can see how much brighter High Tide is. It almost has a neon look by comparison, but I'm sure if I was to compare that to an actual neon, it would be rather dull by comparison. Both of these are more simple in their formulas. They are more of a shimmer. High Tide does have a larger component when you compare it to Waters of Belize, but it is more subtle when you compare it to the larger particle shimmers that we were looking at before. And there in the bottle, I think you can see that green that I was talking about around the edges. I mean, both of these are beautiful. They're almost like a completely different mood though, because one has more of a green dusty base and High Tide has the brighter base. But I think because of that, we're going to go ahead and de-stash Waters of Bliss, even though I do like that one, and then keep High Tide. I like the brightness of that. Yeah. So two gone, two keeps. That's really good. We are over an hour filming and I am not even <laughs> halfway through this. You know what? I think we are going to go ahead and cut the blues into two. I didn't realize this would take me this long and this is going to be a huge long video anyways. So we're going to go ahead and cut the blues down here. So that first half is going to be part one. We're going to come back for part two down here and do some of our darker blues and some of our unique shades, as well as a few multi-chromes. So there we have it for part one of the blues. Didn't know I was going to do that when I started this. Uh, but yeah, we, we had, what, 60 bottles that we were looking at here. So a ton of polish. Let me know how you thought I did on this so far. I think I did pretty good. Let's see. I got rid of 17 out of 31. Wow. 17 out of 31 is over half. Yay. <laughs> wow. I, that, that is a record because I know I haven't done that that well ever before. I know I was pushing myself though on a few of these to make a choice, but I'm okay with it. Like, I don't think I've left this at least as of this moment with any regrets. We'll see how it goes on editing, <laughs> but that's where we're going to go. Uh, we're going to leave it there with 17 D stashed. Let me know again how you think I did. Did I get rid of any that you thought I should keep and vice versa? Did I keep any that you thought I should D stash? But yeah, I am impressed with how I did on this 17 down. As always, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you had a good time. If you're new, definitely think about hitting that little subscribe button if you like nail polish content. You can hit the bell for notification for every time I upload a new video. I'll be trying to release two new videos a week. And yeah, well, we're going to come back in the next video for part two of the blues and see how we do on that one. Again, thank you so much for watching. I will see you in that next one.